It doesn't matter what year you are. I'm head of the associates. If I give you an assignment, you do it. Hey, everybody. This is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous, good-looking friends. Today's video is a doozy, so I hope you're ready. Grab yourself a cup of tea and get comfortable. I'm going to need your undivided attention and ask that you stick with me till the end of this video because there's some eye-opening discoveries that you don't want to miss. Before we get started, do me a huge favor and click the like button so this can reach a lot more people because I think it's definitely some news that needs to bubble up to mainstream. I must preface for legal purposes, some content in this video is opinion-based. My speculations formed comes from the research of materials available to the public online and coming to my own conclusions. I must emphasize for you to do your own research and come to your own conclusions. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's get started. So beginning with this, yesterday, the Mail Online posted this article. Air this, Meghan Markle's key British connections before she met Prince Harry revealed. From David Beckham's PR guru to the daughter of King Charles's closest friend. What caught my attention and drew me into this article specifically was this wonderful little flowchart that they put together, showing all the people that Meghan was connected to prior to meeting Harry. They go into significant detail with each one of these listed here, but for our purposes, this video is going to mainly focus on Misha Nunu, Hikari Yokoyama, and Alexander Yilkes. I'd like to add that the name Hikari Yokoyama is a new name for me, so we're going to be getting into her in a second. So the article first begins with Misha Nunu and her ex-husband Alexander Yilkes, in which they explain that Misha met the former Suits actress in 2014 while attending an Art Basel event in Miami, noting at the bottom that at the time Megan and Misha's first meeting, the designer was married to Alexander Gilks, who attended Eton College at the same time as Prince Harry and Prince William. In being very conscious and fighting misinformation, as you know, Prince Harry says it's a humanitarian crisis, any news from the, the horrible UK media needs to be fact-checked. So what did I do? I went to Finding Freedom, you know, the book that Meghan had direct involvement with, to cross-check the facts. So it says here, according to Scobie, at a Soho House lunch in Miami, he was the one who sat the actress next to Misha, a budding fashion designer with a vivacious personality and impeccable pedigree. The occasion for the December 2014 Miami trip was Art Basel, a decadent art fair that brings the internationally rich and famous for a week of parties and events of all sorts and sizes. Since this book was riddled with lies, we really can't trust that this is correct. So let's go to the source of where Misha now has stated how she met Megan. So this is the article that was referenced from the Mail Online in the Evening Standard to which had told them that the pair had met years ago through another mutual friend in Miami. We were seated next to one another at lunch and we got along like a house on fire. Well, that sort of jives with what Finding Freedom says and also ties back to the original piece. So it checks out. They met in December of 2014 at Art Basel. And by the way, Art Basel happens once a year, and that's always in December. So continuing back to yesterday's article from the Mail Online, I go through and I see this photo and I'm like, hmm, where have I seen those ugly pants before? Oh, right. Seen here in 2015. Most likely, Misha probably gave Megan these pants for free so she couldn't rock them because she's so influential. Anyhow, going back to the article and this picture, I scroll down to the bottom of it to read what the caption says. It says, Misha Nonu and her ex-husband Alexander Gilks, pictured at the 11th annual CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund Awards in November 2014, the fashion designer met Megan in May that year. Hold on. Didn't it just say that they met at Art Basel and that always happens in December? Hmm. It would appear that the paper might have made a mistake. Anyhow, continuing on, 
So next up is Hikari Yokoyama, and it says, it says here, in late 2014, Meghan Markle featured an interview with art curator and interiors expert Hikari Yokoyama on her now defunct blog, The Tig. She then went on to highlight how Hikari had helped set up Paddle 8, the aforementioned auctioneer firm founded by Prince Harry's Eaton peer, Alexander Gilks. So is it accurate with what the paper is stating? Well, we can check because the TIG has all its pages archived. So let's find out what Megan said back in late 2014. So here is the archived piece where it says May 12th, 2014. And how we know that this is the blog? It's because it states right there, as I just mentioned, they cited saying that Hikari, beautiful, fashionable, incredibly cultured. So now that we've established that this is what they were referencing, why would the paper go ahead and say that they met in late 2014 when May is technically early 2014? Another mistake? So according to the TIG and what Megan says, she mentions that she was connected to Hikari by her friend Celine, whoever that may be. So going back to finding freedom... Megan does mention this company Paddle 8, but she attributes it to Misha's husband, Alexander. It's kind of funny, right? Considering that she goes on in Finding Freedom to talk about Misha's husband, Alexander, saying that he's the founder of Paddle 8, when in May of 2014, if allegedly she didn't know Misha by that point, you would think that she would have mentioned that she knew Hikari the other founder, if she was a founder, in this book, right? All about empowering females, the whole theme that she's going on to try and make herself look like she is about female empowerment. No mention. It seems very odd. And of course, anything with Meghan Markle always has inconsistency because there's lies behind it. So now we have to figure out what exactly is the lie. Anyhow, continuing on, in that same TIG blog that was posted on May 12, 2014, right below the post that she wrote about Hikari was this. Coming from New York, courtesy of my dear friend Andre Balaz. What? So for those that don't know, Andre Balaz is a very wealthy businessman and hotelier. So Andre Balaz has been a well-known figure in New York City partly due to his high-profile relationships with Uma Thurman and Chelsea Handler, but also recently, well, not recently, but a few years ago, for being exposed in Sleazy E's Black Book. There are many photographs of Andre Balaz and this woman, who we will call Heidi. As you can see, they were quite close. Alexander, Misha's ex-husband, was also very close with Andre Balaz. And in 2010, Andre was dating a woman who was 22 years younger than him by the name of Catherine Keating. So Catherine is from Australia, and she is the former prime minister's daughter, Paul Keating. She came to New York in 2010 and hopped on to the social scene here by dating this guy Andre, in which she develops a relationship with Heidi. Now, I'm not sure how she met Andre, but I'm going to guess that it was through this network. For those that don't remember, in 2010, Andrew was filmed with this woman coming out of Sleazy E's apartment. That is Catherine Keating. Nobody knows what she was doing there, but soon after, she becomes a staple in the New York fashion nightlife scene. So filled with she becomes a staple in the New York fashion, art, and nightlife scene. She becomes very close to Princess Eugenie and then also Misha and her husband Alexander. In the art world, she also becomes very close with Jay Jopling. So who is this old guy, Jay Jopling? Well he is a very well-known art dealer and gallerist in London. He is a very wealthy man. He also married Hikari Yokoyama, who is 
20 plus years younger than him. Oh, and by the way, buddy buddy with Andre Velaz. Oh, and also, did I mention that Hikari and Misha Nunu are also really good friends, who happened to be at that same Soho House gathering in Miami, pictured with Marcus Anderson, in 2014, seen here. This was actually Jay Jopling and Nick Jones, who is one of the owners of the Soho House's event. And there is Megan's dear friend, Andre Velaz. Let's not forget that Megan was also at this event with her then-boyfriend, Corey Vitiello. So now I'm going to put it out there and say that this event was at nighttime. There was no lunch. And when you look at the calendar and you look at the history, Soho House did not have a lunch planned or an event planned where there was a lunch. What is being reported now, in my view from everything that I've looked at, is that the story that Misha's telling is a bold-faced lie. It's not too far-fetched that this explanation or this version of how Meghan and Harry met is also a lie, because they have lied from the beginning. So the question becomes, why would Misha lie? What does she have to hide? Let's revisit this blind item, dated June 30th, 2020. The illiterate former actress turned royal has a friend who knows all about the yachting and trolling for rich husbands because she was doing it too. The two are very good friends. Turns out, though, a divorce is in the works for the friends. So this was before Misha divorced Alexander. Since Meghan started dating Harry... There has been this rumor that has been going around of Meghan being a yacht girl, also known as a high-end escort. Let's go back to that interview that Misha did with the Evening Standard, in which, remember, she had said that she had met Meghan at this event down in Miami, supposedly in 2014. She tells the writer, at 17, after taking her baccalaureate, Misha was a summer intern at quintessentially the concierge company where she met Alexander, who was then 23. So to summarize what this is, it was a luxury lifestyle management company that facilitated everything from day-to-day nuances like finding nannies, plumbers, or gifts at the last minute. This was catered to a very high-end clientele. So there's flaws actually in this story because the math doesn't add up. So if They are saying that they got married in 2012, and Misha was 17 at the time when she met Alexander, who was 23 at the time, and they dated for seven years, then that wouldn't put them at 2012. So let's look at the math, because the math is not mathing. So going by the Google machine, they say that she was born in 1985. Now, I'm not a math whiz, but if she was born in 1985, then... She would have turned 17 in the year 2002. 2002 plus seven years is 2009. So how could she have gotten married in 2012 when she was 17 when she met him and dated him for seven years? You see, the math does not add up. I am not doubting that she didn't get married in 2012. That's on record. It's just I don't think that Misha is being forthcoming in really how she met. Alexander. So going back to that blind item, is there any weight to it? You bet there is. That quintessentially concierge service that Misha was interning at? Well, they were under a lot of heat for setting up a service that housed escorts. An article featured in the Financial Times back in 2020 wrote, quintessentially a concierge company run by the co-chairman of the UK's Conservative Party, created the website of an international escort agency called Le Besoin and registered it to its London headquarters. Founded by Ben Elliott, co-chairman of the Conservative Party and a friend of Prime Minister Boris Johnson, quintessentially helped set up the website in 2013 advertising discreet, superior escort services in cities including London, New York, and Moscow for high-profile gentlemen. Le Besoin, French for The Need, offered a members-only group of 
high-class models, according to a cash version of the website, which was taken down last year. The website was registered to Quintessentially's office in Portland Place, West London, in 2013. Now, after this was exposed in 2020, the Quintessentially group vehemently denied that they had any association with Le Besoin, even though that they created the website, they created it for somebody else, allegedly. Let's peruse and see what the archives say. So on the About page that's I don't believe is up anymore, it says, The world's most exclusive international escort agency whose long-standing prestigious reputation has been established over many years. We introduce high-profile gentlemen to the creme de la creme of supermodels, playmates, cover girls, and beauty pageant winners. London-based Le Besoin now also provides discreet, superior escort services in New York, Moscow, Monaco, Paris, Milan, among other global destinations. We are a highly selective escort agency and guarantee that all our models radiate an aura of celebrity status. The first thing most businessmen think about London, New York, or Moscow is the market and how amazingly popular it is for new and experienced businesses that are beautiful places full of promises and hope and also good places for escort enthusiasts also. Le Besoin is based in London, which is a very popular place when it comes to bringing in the tourists, and it does have so many amazing things to see and visit. It is a lovely historical destination to visit, with the coast not being too far. However, escort services are a huge tourist attraction. You might be shocked to discover this, but it's true. If you're coming to an international city and want to enjoy a day with a very beautiful woman, why not call on an escort agency to help you? There's nothing wrong with that, and you are guaranteed satisfaction no matter what. With the Le Besoin International Escort Service, this is going to be one of the most convenient and simple services to use today. Oh, it gets better. These are the types of services which are going to be dedicated to you, the client, in finding entertainment and pleasure all day long. <laughs> Wherever you feel lonely or want some company, call an escort service in, because they will help you. You don't need to sit all day alone seeing the sights on your own or sitting in your hotel room alone. You can use an escort to help pass the time <laughs> and make your time in London or other international cities more enjoyable also. It will be well worth it. Question, an elegant service? Why travel for business alone when you can incorporate pleasure as well? It beats sitting alone all day miserable, and you can use only the very best high-class and elegant escort service. Now, it has become so much simpler to find a service that is honest, reliable, and classy. With the internet being a short click away, it has allowed upmarket and honest escort work. You don't have to feel guilty or down. You can spend a day with someone you like, with things that you have in common with one another. Why spend the day gloomy and alone when your day can be made brighter and funnier? <laughs> when you use an escort service, you'll be able to enjoy a vast array of activities and entertainment with an escort. And does anyone really need to know? Of course they don't. No one need to know. Expect you. I think they meant accept you and your lady friend. You will be able to enjoy a fun and fantastic day with the lady of your choice. So enjoy it. What would be more fun? Spending a day alone in a hotel room watching a rerun of a classic soap? Or spending a day with a lady that shares your interests? It's a no-brainer. You can enjoy your short or long trip to London, New York, or Moscow with an escort. And no matter how long your stay may be, you can enjoy the time. Enjoy your quality time. Le besoin for gentlemen who know what they want. Jeez, this is horrible. 
I'm guessing the guys most likely skipped reading the about page and went straight to looking at the girls. Let's take a look at the girls that you can spend your time with that maybe if you want to bring home to mom or bring to the White House or maybe even Buckingham Palace because it's so classy. Ah, we have Ada in Dubai. You can get her for four hours at 1,500 euro. We've got Valeria from Dubai. She's Venezuelan. For three hours, you could get her for 1,500. Oh, even Linda from London. Allegedly, she's 24. Somehow, that doesn't look 24, but I'll take her word for it. Three hours and she's Russian. Wow, classy, classy, classy. So I guess you're wondering, what are the odds are that Sleazy E is involved? Well, Ben Elliot was found in the little black book. So make what you want of that. So now, could it be possible that John Fitzpatrick, since nobody knows how Megan met him, could have been using a service like Le Besoin, if not Le Besoin? I think so. So now, could it be possible that John Fitzpatrick, since nobody knows how Megan met him, could have been using a service like Le Besoin, if not Le Besoin? I think so. Something for you guys to think about. Now, here is something else I want you to think about. This was posted in Reddit. I'm um, not sure if it's still up, but when I read it, I was like, interesting, but as I have been digging through this, it's starting to all make sense now. And it says, this person is posting with permission from their friend, who they'll call Doe, for the post out of respect. And they write, a group of us were hanging out last night, and a related topic came up. For context, my sweet, amazing friend had a horrifyingly dysfunctional childhood. Doe grew up with extremely wealthy parents who had clinical intimate addictions and would frequently sort of advance their children in front of people and bring them along to really inappropriate settings. I knew that Doe, who no longer speaks with her parents, had contributed information to Sleazy E and Heidi's case because she'd been brought along to a few dinners meant to make connections between the various players. How a kid was brought to those and how Doe has turned out so well considering shocks me. In our conversation, Doe revealed that both Andrew and Harry were involved in the circle of players. She didn't say anything about the wife or if she knew anything about alleged involvement. But the confirmation of Harry being involved, which Doe says is officially documented, is something I asked Doe if I could share with y'all. She said, go for it. Now, I don't know if this has any truth to it, but it does align with a lot of the things that I am seeing here in this group of people. I think there's too many coincidences, as well as the amount of lies that have been told to cover something up, if, let's say, this is what it really was. And when you look at this last example, I'm sorry, but I think that this coincidence is just not believable. I don't think it's a coincidence. So in 2015, Megan went to Turkey on April 25th for this Soho House opening. But it just so happened that Prince Harry was also there on April 25th, 2015. I'm sorry, but I think that after seeing all the connections to getting to him, could it be that Harry might have been using a service like this and dialed up and said, hey, can you please come out and meet? I think so. I think there's too many coincidences as well as the amount of lies that have been told to cover something up if, let's say, this is what it really was. And when you look at this last example, I'm sorry, but I think that this coincidence is just not believable. I don't think it's a coincidence. So in 2015, Megan went to Turkey on April 25th for this Soho House opening. 
But it just so happened that Prince Harry was also there on April 25th, 2015. I'm sorry, but I think that after seeing all the connections to getting to him, that could it be that Harry might have been using a service like this and dialed up and said, hey, can you please come out and meet? I think so. And I do believe that there's something bigger that's being covered up. Don't know exactly what. I also find it very interesting that a month later, John Fitzpatrick is with now King Charles. So coincidence? Maybe. So now this actually makes a hell of a lot more sense. David Boyes, the lawyer for Virginia and Jufri, had said that there were three reasons for Ms. Markle being potentially deposed, and which he stated, at least for a period of time, was a close associate of Prince Andrew, and hence is in a position to perhaps have seen what he did, and perhaps, if not, to have seen what he did to have heard people talk about it. Because of her past association with him, she may very well have important knowledge and will certainly have some knowledge. I really do think that Harry calling this out and making up this fabricated story that she didn't know who Andrew was to make that point just shows that there might be something that's being covered up. Like, there was no need to put this into the book. It really had no relevance unless there is some truth behind it. So one thing's for sure, that we know that Meghan and Harry use the book, the interview, the Netflix mockumentary, all to back into their story or narrative that they're trying to sell the world, even though a lot of it's based on lies. So this it should be no different. And I think if they have lied so much, then there's a reason for that. And if the reason is trying to cover up the fact that she was an escort, which all fingers seem to be pointing in that direction. Well, at least for me, after putting this all together, I believe that she was part of this high-class escorting service one way or another. I also believe that Misha was a part of it too, as well as Hikari Yokomama, because all of that just fell apart after going through this exercise, in my eyes. So I want to go back to this book called One Nation Under Blackmail that was written by Whitney Webb. I've mentioned this before in a video that I did talking about the connection between Sleazy E and the royal family, but I want to read a passage that I think is very relevant to how Heidi operated. So this is part of chapter 19, the, the chapter where she talks about Prince Andrew, and it mentions and says that the conduct between Maxwell and Andrew was described as odd in part because Andrew was then dating a friend of Maxwell's Australian-born PR executive, Emma Gibbs. Friends interviewed by the Daily Mail asserted that the relationship between Maxwell and Andrew was strictly platonic, and they were just good friends. However, a separate report from 2007 in the Evening Standard refers to Maxwell as one of Prince Andrew's former girlfriends. This type of behavior seems to be a key part of Maxwell's manipulative tactics. While she was also an expert at manipulating young, vulnerable women, Maxwell was also talented at manipulating men, which she often did to benefit herself and Epstein, and before Epstein, her father. This is attested to in yet another article from the period published in November 2000 by the Sunday Times, which quoted friends as saying, The reason she, Maxwell, has men eating out of her hand is she manages to make them feel sexy and fascinating. She's an outrageous flirt and fascinated by dodgy, powerful men. It's all part of her Electra complex. This type of flirtatious, quasi-romantic behavior on Maxwell's part appears to have been behavior she readily engaged in with not only Prince Andrew, but other of Sleazy E's main targets during this time, such as that president. It is also entirely possible that Maxwell has helped arrange Andrew's then relationship with her friend Emma Gibbs, and that this was another means of making Andrew more dependent on Maxwell to arrange his social life. Indeed, 
She would soon become known as Andrew's social fixer, and she was also described as fulfilling the same role for Sleazy E. Heidi, over the years, appears to have used a range of her girlfriends to infiltrate, manipulate, and control powerful men. And those men may have been content to be coerced in such a way. It seems that this was also the likely motive for Maxwell's and Sleazy's arranging of relationships between the elite tier of girls and women they recruited, who later became the girlfriends and wives of powerful elite men in their broader social networks. I don't know, guys. This does sound a lot like what we have been witnessing happen and what Megan has done to Harry. Why is it that the family cannot put their foot down? Could it be that there's some type of information that she has on the family that could be used as blackmail. It does look like she has learned from the best in manipulating and getting to rich men. She has been certainly hanging around the same people to put her in that orbit. Now think about this. One of the guests at Harry and Meghan's wedding was Alessandra Balaz, the daughter of Andre Balaz. Now why was it that Alessandra was invited, but Megan's dear friend, Andre, was not, considering that he knows all these folks. Nick Jones was there. Misha was there. Well, this is all I have for you today. This weekend was eye-opening in all the reading that I had been doing and cross-checking resources to come to this discovery. Now, this is just my thoughts and really my opinion on Based off of everything, if you were to ask me if I was sitting in a court system and they asked me if I thought Megan was an escort and part of this network, I would say absolutely based off of seeing this information that has been cross-checked by multiple sources. The thing that I want to leave on is this final thought. Not only do Harry and Megan don't want to pay for their security, please remember that with IPP status, it comes with a level of immunity, which means if for any reason, let's say this comes back and let's say Virginia Jufri decides to move forward with a court case or if somebody else comes out of the woodwork and says, hey, you know, we're going to depose Meghan Markle, this could be very problematic, especially if let's say these two have been involved in this network. I believe that Meghan and Harry, again, I keep saying this, they are dangerous. And I believe that they know and have seen some things. This is about as far as I'm going to go on this topic. I know there's a lot more that can be covered, but quite frankly, I don't want to touch it because it is so ugly and it is so dark. I definitely don't want to be wrapped up in this mess. I know that these rumors have been flying around for years, but after all this mess and chaos that they have created, as well as all the lies that they have told, it's not unreasonable or outrageous to think that this is a possibility, which definitely could explain the reason for lying. But what do you guys think? Share your thoughts below. As always, I will be back soon with more content, but until then, please be safe, and I will talk to you later. Bye! It was such a broad. <laughs>